So before we start with the system configuration, let's try to understand the basic the business flows which you have to understand when you are working on the financial applications. Okay, let's take simple example. Mr. X got some requirement. The requirement is laptop purchase. If Mr. X wants to purchase the laptop, the very first point is the requirement is laptop purchase. Mr. X wants to purchase a laptop. That is a requirement. So when Mr. X identify the requirement, if Mr. X is a student, let's take example, Mr. X is student. So Mr. X need money to purchase a laptop. Ideally, Mr. X may contact his parents to take the approval. That means Mr. X required money to buy the laptop. Mr. X first is identifying the Mr. X is required laptop. And the second point is Mr. X is contacting his parents to take the permission to buy the laptop. The next step is Mr. X will go and contact a few shops. Mr. X will go and contact the shops and um, get the quotations as per the configuration requirement. Mr. X required laptop. The laptop configuration will give to the shop. According to the shops will provide the quotation. Then Mr. X may take the quotations from the multiple shops. And Mr. X will look into all the quotations. Who is offering the best price with the same configuration? Then Mr. X itself will take the decision to purchase from which shop. Okay. To purchase from which shop, Mr. X will take the decision. After taking the decision, Mr. X will go to the specific shop and will make the payment and will receive the laptop. So right from requirement to till making the payment, who is handling this activities, Mr. X only because Mr. X is individual. But if you apply the same requirement and procuring the material, and making the payment in terms of organization process, multiple departments should involve in this process. Now we are just discussing about Mr. X. Mr. X is identifying X is required the laptop and he's talking with his parents and he's taking the permission is visiting the shops and taking the quotations, analyzing the quotation, finally taking the decision to purchase from which shop and is visiting the shop, is making the payment and is receiving the laptop. So all the activities are done by Mr. X only. If you take example of any organization, which departments involved to identify the requirement to purchase the laptop and to make the payment, we'll look into that process. So when if you take example of there is one order from the customer. OK, customer, we got order from the customer for 500 laptops. OK, for 500 laptops, organization received an order from the customer. So when they receive the order from the customer, ideally the organization will verify the stock availability within the inventory department. When they check the stock availability for laptops within the inventory, say, they have a stock of, they have the stock of only 400 laptops. Okay, when they check the stock availability within the warehouse inventory department, they identified stock as a 400 laptops only in the inventory. Now, what is the requirement of organization? They need 500. Uh, their, their customer required 500 laptops, 400 stock is available. Now they have to purchase 100 laptops from the suppliers. The requirement is 100 laptops. When the stock is not available, definitely they have to take the initiative of purchasing the for remaining 100 laptops to supply the same as per their customer requirement. Now the customer requirement is 500 laptop, 400 stock is available. They have to buy the one more hundred laptops to fulfill the customer requirement. For that, the inventory department ideally what they do is, they raise the requisition. Okay, the inventory department should create the purchase requisition. The purchase requisition, they can specify the details, which item they required, which item they required laptop. There could be some brand name, etc. as per the customer requirement. The same details they'll provide in the requisition. 
which item required, how much quantity is required, by which date those are required, those details the purchase department can include within the purchase requisition. So what is the ideal responsibility of inventory department? Inventory department responsibility is they have to maintain the stock in the warehouse and if there is any shortage in the inventory, they have to take the initiative of rising the requisition. To purchase the material, they have to rise the requisition and within the inventory department, with the help of that authorized people, they have to get the approvals. If they are going to address 100 laptops required, that should be approved by the department authorized people. Maybe department head or department manager, someone has to approve. Yes, we need that 100 laptops to fulfill the so and so customer requirement. So they have to raise the requisition, they have to get the approvals. They have to get the approvals. So if any shortage in the inventory department, inventory department should take the responsibility of creating the requisition and they'll just get the approvals for the same requisition. Once the requisition is approved by inventory department, inventory department cannot purchase from the suppliers. What inventory department should do is, inventory department will pass this approved requisition to purchasing department. So based on the purchasing requisition, purchase requisition, the purchasing department will raise RFQ. RFQ stands for request for quotation. Okay. So based on approved requisition, purchasing department will create RFQ, request for quotation. Now purchasing department will start contacting the supplier by saying we have requirement for 100 laptops. This is a configuration we required. Please provide the quotation. By requesting for quotation, purchase department will contact the suppliers. So when purchase department would request for quotation, suppliers will provide the quotations. The purchasing department may request for quotation from one vendor or multiple vendors. So they are requesting quotations from how many vendors all vendors or maybe few vendors can provide the quotations. That means the purchasing department will receive the quotations from the vendors. Okay, receive quotations from vendors or say suppliers. When they receive the quotations from the suppliers, the purchasing department should analyze the quotations that you can call as quotation analysis or in short you can say quote analysis. The quotation you can take the short prefix as a quote. So the purchasing department will do the quotation analysis. What does it mean by quotation analysis? Say for example they requested to provide the quotations for 100 laptops. They requested say 20 vendors. But all the suppliers may not provide the quotations. Okay, if they don't have stock availability with the suppliers also, they may not provide the quotation. Say they receive 10 quotations from the 10 vendors. And the 10 quotations what they received from the suppliers, they have to analyze. Which supplier is offering at best price? And which supplier is offering the laptops with the best terms. Say for example, one supplier may give the price as each laptop is 25,000 rupees. Okay. Or else a supplier is offering the price at $500. When supplier is offering that price as a $500, the supplier may say, we have to pay within one month. Other supplier can offer the laptop, the quotation may say, you have to pay $600, but you can make the payment after six months. So organization will take the decision, okay, who, which quotation they have to choose. The price may be less, but you have to pay immediately. You have to pay immediately. And the price may be more, you have to pay later. So these are the points the purchase department will look into. And by analyzing all those points, they'll take the decision 
from which supplier they have to buy. So ideally they get the quotations from the suppliers, they do the analysis. After doing the analysis, they'll choose the best quotation. So based on the requirement, okay, based on the inventory department approved purchase requisition, purchase department is requesting for quotations, they are receiving the quotations, they are doing the quotation analysis, they are choosing the best quotation. So these activities can be done by purchasing department or else if the organization has separate department called a sourcing department, sourcing department also can do these activities. But ideally you can take as a purchase department can do these activities. Once they choose the best quotation, the next step is they have to place the order to supplier. Okay, they'll create the purchase order. They'll create purchase order can call as PO. They'll create the purchase order by addressing they are going to purchase from which supplier and how much quantity they required, by which date they required and what is the agreed price, supplier agreed price with us. By including all the details, they'll place the order to supplier and before placing the order to supplier internally, the purchase order should be approved by internal team. Okay, so they'll create the purchase order and they'll get the approvals. Once purchase order is approved, they'll send that purchase order to the suppliers. Whenever supplier will receive that purchase order, they have to act against the purchase order by supplying the material. So when supplier will supply the material, our organization will receive the material, how much quantity of material, which material or which items we are receiving, that we have to record in the system as a GRN. GRN stands for Goods Receipt Note. Goods Receipt Note. So who will be receiving that material? Ideally, inventory department will receive the material. Yes, inventory department can receive the GRN or else even purchase department also can involve in the recording the GRN. Right. So whenever we receive the material from the supplier, we have to record the GRN, goods receipt note. And when you receive the material, if there is any damage or if the goods are not in the good condition, so those we have to return back to the supplier that we call as purchase returns. Okay, purchase returns. So if required we do the purchase returns, we should not treat this is a very standard business process. So we receive the material and we perform the purchase returns. These activities ideally takes place in the inventory, but those are monitored by purchasing department also. So this is the responsibility of purchasing department. Whenever there is a requirement in the organization, purchasing department, inventory department should raise the requisition. They have to get approvals within the department. So that approved purchase, uh, purchase requisition information they'll share with the purchase department. This purchase requisition short, you can call as PR. Okay, they raise the PR, purchase requisition. Based on approved purchase requisition, the purchase department will request for quotations from the multiple vendors and they'll receive the quotations from the vendors. And once they receive the quotations from the vendors, they do the quotation analysis to identify who is giving the best quotation. So once based on the analysis, they'll choose the best quotation. After choosing the best quotation, they'll place the order to the supplier before placing internally the order need to be purchase order need to be approved. Once that is approved, they'll send that purchase order to the supplier. So against that purchase order, suppliers will supply the material. Once we receive the material, we record the GRN, goods receipt note, or simply you can say receipt. So any damage the, with the item what we received, or if depending on the item, which items we are receiving, if those are not in, in the good quality, we may return that material back to the supplier that we call as purchase returns. So what are the points we discussed so far? Any questions from anyone, please? If no questions, we'll proceed with the further process. Any questions here, please?
Lakshman? Please. Yeah, who receives that GRN? Then who will provide that GRN? Okay. So I <clears throat> ideal inventory department should record the GRN. GRN is nothing but making a note of how much quantity we received from the supplier. And even you will get the relevant document from the supplier also. But ideally, how much quantity we received into our inventory that we have to record in the system or in the books with the concept called a GR. We'll make a note how much quantity from which supplier, which item we received, we'll make a note that we call a GR. So that GRN number is generated by us only or uh, from the supplier? We, we have to create. In our books, we have to generate the number. Okay. So along with this, we'll get the invoice also, but what the invoice number would be created by supply for this material. GRN we record. It's all about the proof how much quantity for which item we received from so and so supplier that we record in our system. Lakshman, oh, this is Lakshman. like P2P cycle. Sorry. We will discuss what we call and all we'll discuss. We are just trying to understand the process. Later we'll convert into all these departments and handle by which application and we'll name it what we call. Okay. Lakshman, one more question. Please. Yeah, so it means that uh, both users, uh, the supplier and receiver, both should have to use the same, if use an application or not required? No, no, not required. Okay. See, I, here I'm not talking about fusion applications also. The general business process I'm talking. It can be any application. Okay, okay. they may record in the spreadsheet, they may record in the tally or focus or wings. It could be any accounting package. They are trying to understand which department should take what responsibility we are trying to understand. That's all. What they do as a part of department activities we are discussing. Nowhere we just we are mentioning the application name here. Okay. The supplier can use ABC application and uh, the customer can use XYZ application. Doesn't matter. But what process need to be followed by specific department we are trying to understand. Fine. So these are the points. Yeah, thank you, Lakshmi. Please. Okay. So now what purchase department will do is they'll pass this GRN information with the papers department by saying from so and so supplier we received material. So again is that please make the payment. With this GRN information, the papers department will create purchase invoice. Okay, so based on the GRN information, if you receive 10 quantity for 10 quantity, they'll create the purchase invoice. If you receive 10, 20 quantity from the supplier, as per the GRN information, they'll create the purchase invoice with the 20 quantity. So within the purchase invoice, the payables department would include who is the supplier, what is the supplier address, how we have to make the payment, when we have to make the payment, all the details they'll include, and as per the due date, they'll make the payment. So the payables department will take the responsibility of making the payments against the purchase invoice. The purchase invoice we are creating based on the material whatever we received from the supply. Based on the GRN, we create the purchase invoice. Against the purchase invoice by following the due dates, the payables department will take the responsibility of making the payment. Now say for example, here we are taking the laptop. Instead of laptop, if you take the case as you are purchasing the land or you are purchasing the building, that we have to treat as a fixed asset. Okay, that is asset for organization. When you talk about laptop, laptops you are purchasing to sell to the customers. Those are not assets for organization, that is a stock for the organization. But if you are purchasing the land or buildings or vehicles or machinery, or anything else which we treat as a fixed assets which we use in our business so in that scenario what we have to do is in that case also we have to get the quotations and we have to receive the quotation from the supplier if say you are going to purchase the plant 
or machinery you have to request for quotations you'll receive the quotations from the the manufacturers and we do the analysis we'll choose the best quotation we'll place the order to the manufacturers to purchase that plant or machinery and uh, we receive that plant into organization okay and we we'll, we don't place in the inventory if that is a plant wherever that is required as per our business we'll place over there so finally against that plant purchase we have to create the purchase invoice if the invoice what we are creating in the payables department if the invoice is related to asset related purchase the payables department will share the asset information to asset department because if any asset related purchases that information need to be recorded by asset department the invoices what we create in the payables department ideally we can create invoice for services when you take some service we have to make the payment to suppliers service providers will create the purchase invoice for service if not for service for expenses when you spend some expense we create purchase invoice or else you can create purchase invoice for the item purchase what are the items we purchased to get into the inventory you can create the purchase invoice or else the purchase invoice may be related to asset purchase with this different reasons we create the purchase invoice to make the payment to suppliers in case of supply services expenses item related invoice we no need to communicate that information with asset department if the purchase invoice is related to asset purchase then payables department should pass that information to asset department saying that the purchase department purchase so and so asset so these are the details this is the worth of that asset those details payables department will pass to asset department based on that asset purchase invoice information the asset department will create fixed asset in this asset department or say asset they'll create asset and based on the usage of asset they'll calculate the depreciation so primarily asset department responsibilities they have to maintain the assets when you say assets those are fixed assets like land building vehicles furniture so which they use in their business all they have to maintain in the asset department as a fixed assets if any asset purchase in the organization the payables department will pass that information to asset department the asset department will maintain that information in their books as a that is a new asset which they purchased in the organization so based on the usage they'll calculate the depreciation against that asset now payables department is passing the purchase invoice information to asset department if the purchase invoice is related to asset purchase if the purchase invoice is related to services expenses item they never share with asset department that is irrelevant information for asset department if purchase invoice which they created that is against so and so asset purchase then only payables department will share the data to asset department now what are the payments they are processing the payment information they will pass to cash department the payables department will take the responsibility of sharing payments information with the cash department what cash department will do is ideally the cash department responsibility is they maintain the bank accounts what are the bank accounts are owned by organization all the bank accounts need to be managed by cash department okay bank accounts they maintain the bank accounts other primary activity what cash department does is they do the bank statement reconciliation in case of bank statement reconciliation what cash department does is they'll take as per bank statement as per bank statement how many payments are processed say bank statement bank statement and the payables department records so they take how many payments are processed as per the bank statement as per bank statement 10 payments are processed as per payables application how many payments are processed 15 payments are processed now they have to make sure that as per payables how many payments are processed those should reflect in the bank account the same they should be able to see with the bank statement so as per bank statement bank statement says 10 payments are processed but payable says 15 payments are processed now they have to look into that information 
as per payables application and 15 payments are processed why 15 payments are not reflecting in the bank account bank statement they look into that the reason could be as, as per payables or payables department yes they process 15 payments but when it comes to bank statement the 15 payments they issued to the suppliers say only 10 checks are submitted to bank for clearing the remaining five payments not yet submitted by suppliers for clearing process if suppliers are not sub submitting for clearing so though that payments cannot be reflected in the bank statement so then our payables department can keep in touch with the supplier saying that we should checks you not yet submitted if you have an issue with the checks please let us know we can help you that sort of communication they can establish there will be some other scenarios like what are the as per our bank statement 10 payments are processed as per the system only eight payments okay your payables department records says only eight payments are processed in the current month but as per bank statement 10 payments are processed now you have to identify why two additional payments are processed how those got processed that could that may be fraud in the organization or that may be mistake as per the department payables department say payables department issued total 10 checks but only eight payments only they recorded in the payables they forgot to record two more payments in the payables the 10 checks what they issued those got cleared in the bank and those 10 are reflecting in the bank statement so this sort of gap they can easily identify by doing the bank statement reconciliation the cash department responsibility is maintaining the bank accounts and performing the bank statement reconciliation in bank statement reconciliation the cash management department uh, department required okay the cash department required payment information from payables and bank statement information from the bank they'll check those two records they'll cross check they verify they match they identify what is the variance what is the difference why that is causing and they'll try to fix those issues they'll make sure that everything is getting reconciled to do this bank statement reconciliation activity cash department required payment information whenever payables department process the payments the payables department pass that payment information to the cash department so that cash department can perform the bank statement reconciliation okay so payables department should sh share purchase invoice information with the asset department if purchase invoice is related to asset in other cases no it could be any invoice related payment all payments information payables department should share with the cash department to perform the bank statement reconciliation so this is how every department will involve in the respective activity finally all these departments should report the business transactions activities to common department so that the cash department would report all these details to common department payables department all purchase invoice payment information asset department all assets and depreciation information the purchase department all that how many how much goods they received or what are the purchase returns they performed all the information they have to report here from inventory side what is the stock and inventory related any other transactions we have all the data they have to report to common department so that by taking all these details from the different departments the common department will be in the position to prepare the financial reports okay the common department can prepare the financial reports based on the data which they are receiving from the different departments so this is a standard process organization follows if they are going to purchase anything as per the requirement okay so requirement is identified by inventory department and they'll take the support from purchase department to purchase and other side the purchase department will pass that information to payables department to make the payment typically these three departments are involving to purchase and to make the payment okay requirement is raised by inventory department as per the requirement here we take in the simple example there is order from the customer for 500 laptops and only stock availability is 400 and to purchase 100 laptops inventory department is raising the requisition so this is the external demand external requirement or else within our company also there could be requirement to purchase something in that case also the same process we have to follow it could be demand from the sub customers or it may be internal requirement okay say you need uh, 
some stock, you are doing some manufacturing activities, you need some raw material. The yes, same process you have to follow. You have to raise the requisition, you have to take approvals internally, you have to request for quotations and all. And again, one more point, say, today we purchased laptops and we followed this process. Again, tomorrow you want to purchase. If you are going to purchase tomorrow, again, 100 more laptops, again, purchasing department, no need to request for quotations. We have suppliers whom we identified, directly we can place the purchase order. Okay, so within one day, there won't be any too much of price difference in the market, that is the reason. So this we follow as a standard process. Again, if you are going to purchase tomorrow, again, you don't need to request for quotations, you don't need to receive the quotations, you don't need to analyze or you don't need to choose the best quotation. Say yesterday only we identified the supplier who can give at best price. Then if there is any requirement tomorrow for a few more laptops in the inventory department, then based on the purchase requisition, directly you can create the purchase order. You can place the order to supplier since you identified supplier yesterday only. So again, if you are going to buy after one month, one month after one month, you are going to purchase the laptops, definitely you can follow the process called as getting the quotations, analyzing, choosing. Within the one year gap, there could be some fluctuations for that item price in the market to identify who is giving the best price after one month. Again, you can go with the standard process of pricing the RFQ and getting the quotations. So this is how the each department involved in this procurement process till we make the payment. Once we make the payment and all the payables department will share the information to asset department to maintain the asset. If the purchase invoice related asset, the for bank statement reconciliation payment information need to be shared with the cash department to perform the bank statement reconciliation. Finally, to prepare the financial reports based on the finance data. Okay, when you say finance data, it's very primarily this data. So the common department will come into the picture to collect the data from all the departments to prepare the reports. So to handle this process, for each department, we have a separate application from Oracle. So to create, to maintain the stock and to create the purchase requisitions to approve the same and to do some other inventory related activities, we have an application from Oracle called as, okay. Oracle Fusion Inventory Application. By using the Oracle Fusion Inventory application, the short name is INB. Okay, the short name is INB. By using the Oracle Fusion Inventory application, you can maintain the stock. You can maintain the stock. If you can raise the requisition, if there is any requirement in the organization, okay, and you can get the approvals. Right. So this process you can follow by using the Oracle inventory application. By using the Oracle inventory application, you can raise the requisition and you can get the approvals. And uh, one second, what's wrong with this? Right. So by using the Oracle Fusion Inventory, you can create a purchase request and you can approve and you can maintain the stock also within the Oracle Fusion Inventory. And what purchasing department is doing, they are raising the RF, uh, RFQs and they're receiving the quotations, quotation analysis, choosing the best quotation and creating the purchase orders according to the receipt and all. To perform all these activities, for purchasing department purpose, we have an application from Oracle, which we call as Oracle Fusion Purchasing Application. In short, we call as PO. Okay. Oracle Fusion Purchasing, PO. By using Oracle Fusion Purchasing Application, you can create the RFQs and you can perform all these activities. And what payables department is doing, they are creating the purchase invoices and they are processing the payments. To perform those activities, we have an application from Oracle, which we call as Oracle Fusion Accounts Payable. 
Spark will give you an accounts payable application. In short, we call as AP. Okay. By using Oracle Fusion Accounts Payable application, you can create the purchase invoices and you can process the payments. And to maintain the bank accounts and do, to perform the bank statement reconciliation, we have application from Oracle which we call as Oracle Fusion Cash Management. In short, you can call as CM or CE also. Okay, short name CE or CM. Oracle Fusion Cash Management, CM. We have a separate application called as Cost Management. That is the reason instead of using the CM for cash management, you can call it the CE. CE means cash entry system. So with, by using Oracle Fusion Cash Management application, you can maintain the bank accounts and you can perform the bank statement reconciliation. And if the purchase invoice related to asset purchase, the payables department, AP department, or this application will share the data with asset department. What asset department is doing? They are maintaining the fixed assets and they are calculating the depreciation. To maintain the fixed assets and to calculate the depreciation, we have application from Oracle that we call as Oracle Fusion Fixed Assets. In short, we can call as FA. By using Oracle Fusion Fixed Assets application, you can create the assets and you can calculate the depreciation. From all the departments, this common department should collect the data to prepare the financial reports. To do that activity, Oracle is providing an application called as Oracle Fusion General Ledger application. The short name is GL. By using Oracle Fusion General Ledger application, you can prepare the financial reports. That means from all these applications, you can collect the data. That means as per business, what are the departments every company maintains for each department to maintain the data separately, what are the activities they are doing? Oracle is providing the separate applications. By using those applications, you can perform the department related activities and all the application, however, reality, they'll have a communication. The same communication they're establishing in the system environment also. These are the different application. The Oracle Fusion inventory is connected with the Oracle Fusion purchasing application. Oracle Fusion purchasing application is connected with Oracle Fusion accounts payables. Oracle uh, Fusion accounts payable application is connected with the Oracle Fusion cash management and the same is connected with the Fixed assets, the same is connected with this general ledger application also to share the data across these applications. However, reality, the communication takes place across the departments, the same environment they built in the system with the applications concept. So what are the transactions we are going to record in each and every application as per the department activities, those data can be shared across in the system environment also. Okay. So what are the information, what are the purchase invoices you are creating here that you can share with the pay purchasing department. Whatever the information you are creating here as GRN or purchase, and purchase orders, that information you can share with the payables department or payables application. The payments information you can share with the cash management application. The asset related purchase invoice information you can share with this application. And all the data you can share with the general ledger application to avoid the duplication again each and every department no need to create based on the prior records reference records they can create the required information or required uh, transactions in the respective application so this is what we have to understand so this process we simply call as p2p cycle p2p cycle p2p stands for procure to pay Okay, procure to pay cycle. So what does it mean by procure to pay? In this process, you can say right from procurement to till we make the payment, procure to pay. 
the procurement start process starts with the raising the requisition and the process will end with the payment so that means primarily p2p cycle means we have to consider these three departments or three applications so whatever the transactions we are generating with the p2p cycle that information we are sharing with which other applications also we discussed here okay as per p2p cycle when there is a requirement in the organization inventory should take the responsibility of raising the requisition once the requisition is approved the requisition information inventory should share with the purchasing department purchasing department will create the rfqs they get the quotations they do the analysis they choose best quotation they will place the order to supplier with approval once organization receive the material they will create the return they will create the grn if any uh, damage in the quantity they may return the return the quantity back to the supplier finally the purchasing department will share the grn information with the payables department based on the GRN information payables department will create the purchase invoices. They will make the payments. If purchase invoice related to asset related purchase, the payables department will share that information with the asset department. Based on that asset purchase invoice information, the asset department will create the fixed assets and accordingly they will calculate the depreciation based on the uses. The payables department should share payment information with the cash, cash management department. To do the bank statement reconciliation. Apart from that, cash department is responsible to maintain the bank accounts. Finally, all the departments should share the data with the common department, which you can call it as application point of view, general ledger application. This process we call as P2P cycle. Why we are calling a cycle? It's a cycling activity. If you want to purchase today, you have to raise the requisition, you have to go with this process, and you have to just pass this information to payables. Payables has to pass to cash management for the bank statement reconciliation. If invoice related asset, that has to be shared with the fixed assets. Finally, all the data should be shared. And again, tomorrow you are going to do it. Same activity, same process, same cycle you have to follow. Maybe after one month you are going to purchase. The same process you are going to follow, it is going to be repeated whenever you have a requirement. All these departments should involve in this process. That is the reason this we call as. P2P cycle, okay, procure to pay cycle. When you procure and pay, this standard process need to be followed. The same you can implement in our fusion application by using these different applications. Okay, so we'll work on all these applications when you talk about P2P cycle. Any questions on this, please? Um, hi, Lakshman. I have... Yeah, please go ahead. This is entire process we call as a P2P. Or it will, uh, your voice is very low. GL your voice is low. Can you be a bit loud? Yeah. Yeah, this entire process we call as a P2P cycle. Am I right, Correct. The entire process we call as P2P. But very primarily, you have to consider these three applications only. But other applications are connected with the relevant data. That is the reason we are discussing. So overall, you can till end point. You have to consider this as a P2P cycle. What are the primary departments or say what are the primary applications are involved in the P2P means these three primary. So these entities, the price circles are belongs to P2P. Sorry. Entire five circles. Five circles you mentioned. Yeah, five applications. All five, six. Uh, six applications involved in the p2p yes. cycle the primary applications are primary departments are these three yes this everything what you see this only we call as p2p cycle primarily which departments involve means these are the primary departments which involve but all departments you can consider as a p2p cycle any questions here please uh, yes lakshman i have two questions and a comment Please ask so, questions directly. Please don't mind. You don't need to say you have a question and all. I'm requesting for questions only, direct questions. Please don't mind. Okay. Yeah. So uh, in EBS, uh, there are two type of uh, banks that we handle. One is internal and one is external. So the internal one is uh, the one which is handled by cash management and uh, the tables are, I guess, CE or something. Same as and there are some... also, if you want to understand that point. Okay. So when you are dealing with a specific it also get stored into everything. Now we are trying to understand the process flow. 
So if you talk about detail level, if you go okay. to tables, we have a different type of invoices, different type of payments. Here you don't need to understand to understand what is the P2P cycle. Those are application specific functionalities. When we are dealing with those applications, we we'll look into that application specific functionalities, how it would work. But here we are trying to understand the process, how the process can be handled in case of procurement and payment. That's all. So, okay. Um, Actually, one question I had is. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. If uh, we're starting a network in the company, and so the network has a physical component that's an asset, and then you have insulation services. Yeah. And I want both of them depreciated. Okay. Does that, is the system able to handle that? So that because you said earlier system. that services are not handled. No, no, you have to do network and all you want to depreciate reality that is not a like a physical, but as a workaround, you can create as assets since you have a requirement of depreciate. Even that is a virtual, you have to physical as asset, you have to create. Since no, but let me break it down. There's a hardware piece and there's an installation piece, okay? Keep it okay. simple. There's a hardware, there's a router throughout the building, wireless yeah, access in that point. Case, what we can do is and there's a guy, there's a guy who's going to come and install it. So there's a Labor piece and a, and a material piece, and I want both of them depreciated. Yeah. So the, when you are creating asset in the fixed assets, you can include the total cost into that asset. Accordingly, you can calculate the depreciation. Okay. Yeah. And again, you will have a requirement of there will be some assets. Let's take example of land. You create land as fixed assets, but there won't be any requirement of calculating the depreciation for land. Always there will be appreciation. So this is all how to handle that we'll see in the fixed assets. We are only the process, process we have to understand what we call as P2P. Okay, if you have yep. some application specific or department specific requirements, when we are working on that specific relevant application, we will definitely discuss and we'll work on this. Yep. This is just to understand how the data flows or how the departments can have a communication with respect to activity that is procuring and making the payment. That's all. Any questions, please? So on the on the purchasing application, right? You mentioned Oracle Fusion purchasing. Correct. Uh, that has various tasks, right? But you know, if in reality, uh, this this you know this is not only PO, right? So we are talking about I procurement, sourcing, uh, actual purchasing module, and then the receiving, right? So all this activity consists of probably four to five uh, kind of you know tracks. So is that not the case in fusion? Yes. If if organization is going to have a different process, see this I am just discussed as a as a part of purchasing. Reality, these activities should be handled by the sourcing application. Okay. Correct. Sourcing application. If organization is small, generally that as a part of P2P cycle, the procurement department only will involve. To do this activity, they, they may need application called a sourcing application, but handling will be done by purchasing application. That's how it happens. If organization is very big, there could be separate team for sourcing also. They'll use the sourcing application. They do all these activities. Otherwise, applications can be different like purchasing and sourcing, but all can be handled by purchasing department people. Only. That's what I'm trying to address here. Okay. So there is a sourcing application in Fusion as well, yes. right? Yeah. There is I procurement application. Correct, correct. Fusion also we have. So by using that sourcing application, you can do all these activities. Also, I procurement, right? So I procurement for I procurement means we have a separate application called a self-service procurement. That is a separate application. Okay. Okay. So EBS, whatever we have, I procurement that we call as self-service procurement in the fusion application. Okay. Thanks. Other questions, please. So, Lakshman, are we going to cover that uh, I procurement or ISFR part in this course? So, that is part of SEM course. Okay. In our classes, I'll cover because our focus would be on these modules. These are finance applications. So, we have to understand the P2P cycle. For that reason, what I'll do is we'll do the basic setups in inventory. Okay. We'll see how to create the recreation, how to create the, how to perform the approvals for the same. And in the purchasing application, we'll do the required setups against the purchase recreation, how to create the purchase order, how to receive the material. 
have to understand the process we are discussing, but this all completely will should be handled by SEM consultant. When you are working as finance consultant, we are not going to implement inventory or purchasing application and we never involve in this activity. Since we are working on finance application, the payables application got integration, connectivity with the purchasing, purchasing got connectivity with the inventory to understand how the process flow works. We will see how this P2P cycle will work. When you talk about inventory purchasing, there is a lot of functionality that should be handled by SEM consultant. We'll go through basic setups and the basic cycle with respect to these applications because this doesn't fall under finance, but still we are going to touch base on that. Are we going to cover IRISO? See, that's what are, uh, those are the different uh, features, the internal sales or internal requisitions and all those need to be handled in the SEM part. Okay. But we're going to cover some part of order management, right? I mean, that's part of our yeah, order curriculum. management is different. Or, now we are not talking about order management, right? Let's talk about this one. When we talk about that, yes, okay. we'll discuss about here. There is okay. order management. Okay, we are talking about P2P cycle. When you talk about other cycle, we'll, we'll talk about that. Now we are going to discuss that also. So any questions on this, please? Okay, this is what we call as P2P cycle. Okay, tomorrow if you are going to face any interview or any situation, if you want to talk about P2P cycle, this is what we have to talk. Then, Now let's see how you record process. Yeah, please. Yeah, how you record this is a fixed asset, this is a regular invoice like that. We'll see this stuff. Those? We are going to create those. Okay. Now, just to understand the process flow, how reality we do, we'll see in the system. We'll work on the payables in the both. We'll see how to create the asset invoice, how to create expense invoice, how to create item based invoice, all we'll see. For anything, we have to create invoice. Right? Sorry? For anything, whatever to tell it, fixed assets or uh, expense invoice, anything we have to create an invoice. Invoice only, yes. It could be service related or expense related, item related asset. Invoice we have to create. Because we have to pay, right? You may take some services, we have to pay. If you want to pay, invoice is required. You spend some expense. If you want to make the payment, you need invoice. You purchase the item. If you want to make the payment for that invoice required against the item, you purchase the asset. If you want to make the payment for asset purchase, you have to create invoice. For any case, invoice is required. How to create, we'll see in the tables. Any other questions here, please? No questions. Now we'll move on to sales process. Okay, this we call as P2P cycle. This is P2P. Now let's look into sales process. Say you received order from the customer for thousand quantity, thousand laptops requirement. When you check with the inventory department, as per inventory, five thousand quantities available. Okay, we got order from the customer for thousand laptops. When you verify within the inventory. 500 quantities available. Now you can start supplying that material to customer. So you got order from the supplier for 1000 quantity. You don't have any stock in the inventory. So in that case, what inventory will do you? We already discussed. If no stock in the inventory, they'll raise the purchase requisition, they'll get approvals, they'll raise the RFQs, they'll get the quotations, and they finally place the purchase order, they'll receive the material. But now we are taking the case. We got order from the customer for 1000 laptops, but we have 5000 quantity available in the inventory department. Who received the order from the customer? The sales department received the order from the customer. Okay. Sales department will receive order from the customer that they record in their books as a sales order. Okay, sales department receive the order from the customer. Customer point of view, what are the customer is placed in the order that is a purchase order for customer point of view. Whatever customer is calling as purchase order from customer side, once we receive the same order, we call a sales order. We are receiving that to sale and customer is placing the order to purchase. 
so customer point of view that is purchase order so when we are selling that is we call a sales order so that means in sales department we record the sales order when you get order from the customer sales department will record the sales order in the sales department books so fine they received sales order for 1000 laptops when they receive the order from the customer what sales department has to do is they will check stock availability with inventory department whenever they receive the order to fulfill that order whether stock is available or not they have to check with inventory department if inventory department says yes stock is available the sales department will give the confirmation to the customer as they are going to supply the material how they do the confirmation they'll book the sales order their books they'll record they'll make a note as yes it's confirmed or they will make a note as it's booked that means booking the sales order is nothing but giving the confirmation to the customer as we are going to supply say so sales department received 100 sales orders from the different customers but 100 sales order they may not book if they have a capability of supplying the material accordingly they can give the confirmation say they received 100 orders from the customer they may confirm only 10 remaining 90 they are not in the position to supply since the relevant items related stock is not available in the inventory sometimes even stock is not available in the inventory department warehouse still they can book the sales order still they can give the confirmation to the customer in which scenario say customer placed order and sales department received that as a sales order as per sales order customer required material in the 10 days customer required 100 laptops in 10 days when you check with the inventory department in, in inventory department we have zero quantity no stock available but sales department can talk to the inventory department we need 1000 laptops in 10 days is it possible to arrange those 1000 laptops in that case inventory department will talk to purchase department there is one order from the customer to the sales department they have to fulfill that order within the 10 days so is there any possibility we can get the material within 10 or before 10 days if purchasing department says yes we can get 1000 laptops within 5 days itself then based on that confirmation inventory department will talk to the sales department you can go ahead and you can give the confirmation to the customer since we spoke to purchasing department they are in the position to purchase to get 1000 laptops into warehouse within 5 days so that we can supply to the customer okay before 10 days also if required so even stock is not available based on the supply possibilities there is a possibility to purchase and supply so in that scenario also sales department can give the confirmation to the customer or else if stock is available then only they will give the confirmation to the customer so what sales department is doing they are receiving the order from the customer they are recording a sales order they are giving the confirmation to the customer based on the stock availability or supply possible once they book the sales order that means they are given the confirmation to the customer where you can find the stock stock would be available in the inventory department the next step is they have to move the stock from the our organizations to customer organization let's look into how the inventory can be structured so this entire area you can consider as an inventory to maintain the stock separately say they, they may have a different items the separate items they can maintain as a separate sub inventories okay sub inventory one they may maintain the laptop in sub inventory two they may maintain the desktop in sub inventory two they may maintain the mobiles the sub inventory four they may maintain the ipads okay so this is how they can have a separate partition within the warehouse area like where in the warehouse management they'll do the partition like this okay they can separate small partitions they can create to maintain the stock separately now say you are going to purchase the material from the supplier if you are going to purchase the material from the supplier you will receive the material into some staging area there could be some common area for every warehouse first they will take the material into the staging area once they receive the material into staging area which material they receive laptop so they will place that material into laptop sub inventory Say they received iPad. 
So the iPads they'll move from staging area to sub inventory. That means whenever they receive the material from the supplier, they will place in one area. From there, they will move into respective sub inventories. Even if you are going to supply to your customers also, you have to move the material from the sub inventory to the shipping area. The same area you can call a shipping area. You can move into that common place. From there, you can load it to the truck and you can ship to the customer. When you receive the material into organization and when you are going to ship the material from organization, you may have a, some common area where you place the material first. From there, you can take it to sub inventories or from there, you can ship to the customer. So the entire area we are calling as inventory organization area and the partitions we are calling as sub inventories and this common area we are calling as in the receiving point of when you are purchasing from the supplier that you can call as a receiving area. When we are going to ship to the customer, you are calling as shipping area. But reality, you maintain the stock in the sub inventories. But when you are supplying, you will move the material from the sub inventory to shipping area. In the shipping area, the packing and shipping, everything, the packing and loading the truck, all the activities should take place. If you are purchasing from the suppliers, first you will get the material. The truck may come and unload the material in this receiving area. From there, we will move to respect to Invent sub, in, uh, sub inventories as per the organization structure which our clients are following. Now, once inventory, one sales department will give the confirmation to the customer. The inventory, what they have to do is say sub inventory one is related to laptop sub inventory. Now, what inventory department has to do is they have to move the material from sub inventory to this shipping area. This you can call a staging area, okay, or common area. They'll move the material from sub inventory to shipping area. This activity should be done by inventory department or else if the organization has a separate shipping department also, that department will do this activity. Ideally, that activity should take place within the warehouse area. This is a physical activity. So whenever inventory team will move the material from the sub inventory to shipping area to ship the material to the customer, that information sales department will get from inventory. Inventory department should inform to sales department as per so and so sales order, we moved material from the sub inventory to staging. So whenever inventory will inform to sales department as material is moved from sub inventory to this shipping area or staging area, the sales department will record in their books as a quick release has happened. Peak release is nothing but moving the material from sub inventory to staging area we call as peak release. The peak release activity should be done by inventory department that should be tracked by sales department. Why sales department has to track this information? The reason is customer would be in touch with the sales department only. Customer will call to sales department saying that what about my stock? then sales department should be in the position to update what exactly happening in our organization against that sales order. They can, if the if sales department get the information from inventory department, they can answer to the customer. Okay, as we promised, you will be receiving the material by tomorrow. Already we just packed your material. That means if quick release is done, quick release is done in the inventory means the inventory material is moved from sub inventory to shipping area. So that they have to track. Once inventory team will move the material from our shipping area to customer location, then sales department will record the status as a ship confirm. They'll record ship confirm. That means they ship the material. So when they ship the material, they may get the call from the customer. Then sales department can answer, yes, we shipped the material yesterday. By today afternoon or by today evening, you will receive the material. So we already shipped. Okay. The vehicle already started yesterday and you will receive the material by today end of the day or so and so time they specify based on the distance and how much time would take to deliver the material to the customer location. So this activity takes place in the inventory but should be tracked by sales department because they should be able to answer to the customer calls. 
So whenever there is order from the customer, the sales department is responsible to record as a sales order. They'll check for the stock availability with the inventory department. Based on that, they'll book the sales order. Whenever inventory move the material from the sub inventory to shipping area, or you can call it staging area, that they record in their books as a quick release has happened. Then whenever they ship the material from our organizations to customer organization, that, that should be recorded in the sales department books as a ship confirmation is done. Once you ship the material to the customer, customer will receive the material and sometimes customers can return the materials also. Say you ship 1000 quantity of laptops and in the transportation or in before transportation, whatever it may be, customer received 100 laptops, two laptops are damaged. In that case, customer will return those two laptops. In that case, the sales department should take the responsibility of recording the sales returns also. Against which sales order, how, many, how much quantity is returned that they have to update in the system. Okay, if required, we'll perform the sales returns, but it is not a standard business process all the time we do it, right? If any damage or any, if the items are not good in, in good conditions, then only some customers will return. So that also should be recorded by sales department as a sales returns. And once ship confirmation is done, to which customer, which item, how much quantity is shipped, that information sales department will pass to receivables department. Based on that ship confirmation details, receivables department will create in their books as a sales device. The sales invoice, they'll include all the details to which customer, which item, how much quantity is sold and what is the price, what is the total amount, when customer is going to pay, okay, what is the customer address, all the details receivables department will receive from the sales department based on the ship confirmation activity. So then receivables department will follow up the customer to get the payment. Once the receivables department will receive the payment from the customer against the sales invoice, they'll create the receipt. Okay, they'll create the receipt. The receivables department will share this receipt information with the cash department to perform the bank statement reconciliation. Already we discussed the cash department is responsible to maintain the organization bank accounts and they do the bank statement reconciliation. Okay, you can call as BRS. So here what sales cash department will do is they'll take the receipts from the receivables. Okay. So as per receivables, as per receivables department, as per receivables department records, they got 10 receipts. As per bank statement, okay, as per bank statement, they can see only five receipts. This is as per receivables. This is for bank statement. Okay. As per receivables, the cash department received for this month 10 receipts for bank statement reconciliation and as per bank statement, the bank statement is reflecting only 5 receipts. Then they have to find out the reason. Just as per receivables, they received 10 checks from the customers, but only 5 checks they submitted in the bank, those got cleared. That is the reason bank statement says only 5. Or else 10 checks they received from the customers as the 10 payments that they recorded as receipts in the receivables. And when they submitted 10 checks to the bank, 5 got cleared, 5 are in the clearing process. That is the reason the variance they can identify. Always they have to make sure that what is reflecting in our system, the same should reflect in the bank statement or else whatever the, reflect, whatever the transactions that could be payments or receipts reflecting in the bank statement that should match with our system records also. For that reason, the cash department should take the responsibility of doing the reconciliation. Now here what we are reconciling, receipts we are reconciling. In case of pay, P2P cycle, they are reconciling the payments. Okay, so here with payables they do the payments reconciliation. With the receivables department they do the 
precedes reconciliation. So finally, all this data we have to send to common department to prepare the financial reports. So all the data, all the departments will share the data with common department to prepare the financial reports. So already we discussed. So for inventory department, we have application from Oracle, which we call as Oracle Fusion Inventory. Okay, we have application called as Oracle Fusion Inventory. And what sales department is doing, they are recording the sales orders and they are giving the confirmation to the customer based on the activities which takes place in the inventory. They are tracking the same as a quick release and ship confirmation. Any returns from the customer, they are recording the sales returns. To do all these activities, we have application from Oracle, which we call as Oracle Fusion Order Management. In short, we call as OM. Okay, OM stands for order management. And what receivables department is doing based on the ship confirmation details, they are creating the sales invoice against the customer. Whenever they get the payment from the customer against the sales invoice, against which sales invoice, how much amount they received from which customer, they record the receipts. To record the sales invoices under receipts, we have an application from Oracle, which we call as Oracle Fusion Accounts Receivable. Short you can call as ER. Okay. Oracle Fusion Accounts Receivable. By using Oracle Fusion Account Receivables, you can create the sales invoice and you can create the receipt. And of uh, to maintain the bank accounts and to perform the bank statement reconciliation, we have a application called as Oracle Fusion Cash Management. The short name is CM or CE. Okay, if you have any short name you can use. You can refer with the both short names and it's CM or CE. By using the Oracle cash management, you can maintain the bank accounts and you can perform the bank statement reconciliation. Finally, all the data we have to send to common department to prepare the financial reports. To manage all this data with the help of common, uh, to maintain all the data by common department, we can use one application called as Oracle Vision General Ledger application. The short name is GL. So by using the GL, you can just prepare the financial reports. All these departments will share the data with the common in the same way application point of view. All these applications will share the data with general ledger application. Okay, so this is what we have to understand. Now this process we call as O2C cycle. O2C stands for author to cash. In this cycle right from sales order to till we receive the cash we are handling all these activities okay order to cash we create order here sales order to cash up to receive the cash so in this cycle okay in this process we are initiating this process by when we receive the order from the customer we'll stop this process as a business activities by creating the receipt Cash means your receipt. When you create the receive the cash, that will record as a receipt. So primarily, these three departments or three applications are involved in the O2C cycle. Okay, order to cash cycle. Why we are calling this as a cycle? This is also cycling activity. If you get order again from other customer, yes, you have to record the sales order. You have to give the confirmation by booking, quick release ship confirmation. If required, sales returns from the customer. And this information we have to pass to receivables department from the sales department. The receivables department will create the sales invoice, they'll create the receipt, the receipt information they'll share with the cash management department. 
and they will do the bank statement reconciliation. Finally, all the data need to be shared with the common department or in terms of application to general ledger application. So for that reason, this we call as cycling activity. Okay. This we call as cycling activity. So this we are calling as O2 cycle. So these are the applications are involved in the O2C cycle. Please make a note of what are the short names we are using. Oracle Fusion Inventory INV, Oracle Fusion Purchasing PO, Oracle Fusion Cash Management CMRCE, Oracle Accounts Payables AP, Oracle Fixed Assets FA, and Oracle Fusion General Ledger GL. When we talk about short names, or simply you can call as Inventory Purchasing, Cash Management, Accounts Payables, and General Ledger fixed assets when you talk about sales process okay so order management we are calling as om oracle fusion order management om oracle fusion accounts receivable in short we are calling as ar this already we discussed here simply you can call as account receivables and order management inventory general ledger and cash management. so remember all the short names let's see the two cycles how those are connected under data flows so this is a P2P and O2C cycle. So here up to here, you can treat as a P2P cycle. So if any requirement, we have to raise the requisition and approvals, then RFU quotation analysis, choosing the best quotation, creating the PO, recording the GRN and performing the purchase returns if required. Then based on that, GRN information, AP should create purchase invoice, they'll process the payments. If purchase invoice is related to asset purchase, AP will share the data with fixed assets, FA. Within the fixed assets application, you can create the fixed assets and you can calculate the depreciation. And the AP would share payment information with the cash management to perform the bank statement reconciliation. Finally, all the data will transfer to GL as a part of P2P. When I talk about O2C, this is the O2C cycle. When we record the order, we'll check with inventory for stock availability. If it is okay, we'll book the sales order. We'll perform the pick release and uh, ship confirmation. These all activities, picking and shipping should be done by inventory, but that should be tracked by order management, OEM application. And there could be sales returns from the sub customers. If you get the order, uh, any material back that will record as the sales returns, the OEM would share the ship confirmation with the receivables department here based on the ship confirmation the account receivables you can create the sales invoice you can create the receipts air application will share the receipt information with the cash management for bank statement reconciliation finally all the data will send to gl to prepare the financial reports so in the two cycles which common departments we have you can see here these are the three common departments or three common applications which are involved in the p2p and O2C. Okay, the P2P cycle and O2C cycle, inventory is a common department. In the P2P and O2C, to do the bank statement reconciliation, to do the payments reconciliation, cash management is required in the P2P cycle. To do the receipts reconciliation, cash management is required. So, and finally, from all the application data need to be transferred to general ledger application. So, GL also common application in the P2P. When you look at flow specific applications, these are the flow specific. Only these three applications are in, sorry. Only these three applications are involved in the P2P cycle. Only these two applications are involved in the O2C cycle. So these are the points we have to understand. These two cycles you should aware before we start with the application. Whatever we are going to discuss, so to understand more detail level, these cycles we have to understand so that if you are going to work on tables, what is the background and how the process flows from tables data can be shared with the with the, which applications, what is the purpose, this and all you can understand. And these five applications which are involved in the P2P we call as financial applications. And these applications, inventory, PO, OM, we call as supply chain management applications. So other than GL, all applications we call as subledger applications. Okay, other than general ledger application, all applications we call as subledger application. The reason from all the applications, what are the data we have that will get into GL? The GL will have a total data, but in the other applications we have in AP, we have AP data only, in AR we have AR data only, in FA we'll have FA data, but in GL we have a total data 
that is the reason this is general ledger it's a common ledger which maintains all applications data but if you compare with the gl other applications will have a sub part of data only in the respective application that is the reason if you compare with the general ledger these are sub ledgers only so that is the reason other than gl all applications we call as sub ledger applications so this is all about p2p and o2c cycle this we call as o2c Okay. I'll share this spreadsheet also. I'll place in the Google Drive so you can access this sheet also for your reference. Any questions on this, please? Any questions from anyone to understand P2P or O2 Society? Okay, our primary focus would be on finance applications. To understand the P2P O2C, we'll do the required setups in the inventory and PO, OM so that we can test the cycles and prime will but we'll focus on primarily on finance since our course is finance course. I'll take you through the basic flow within the inventory PO and OM as a part of P2P and O2C cycles. Any questions from anyone, please? If no questions, we can wind up for today. We'll connect tomorrow. Yeah. Lakshman, can you tell me the flow between fixed assets to GL? Yeah, fixed assets to GL. We'll transfer the data. That's all. We'll see in the fixed assets what we are maintaining. The fixed assets will create the assets, right? Based on the purchase invoice information, we'll create the assets, and we'll create the calculate the depreciation along with that we do many other activities but what are the primary activities in each and every department we are discussing along with that you can retire the assets so all the data how many fixed assets we have for that you will create the accounting entries and you will transfer the gl for reports preparation how much depreciation you calculated that accounting information will transfer from fixed assets to general ledger how many assets you retire that information will transfer from fixed assets to general ledger for reporting purposes that's all any questions, please? Okay, try to understand this flow. Which departments or which applications will have a connectivity to pass which data? If you want to understand about detailed application, definitely you have to wait for some time to start with that application. When we are working on application, we can understand how we can use accounts payables application, what setups we have to do, what are the different features we have, how those can be handled, everything we can understand. But to understand this P2P and O2C cycles, this is the information we require. Any questions, please? Um, Lakshman, I have a couple of questions uh, from yesterday. Please. And you told me to please, discuss please, at the end. So ahead. is it the right time to discuss? Yeah, so uh, when we create an implementation project, so when we select financial, so under that we'll have to select each and every like supplier invoice processing and other checkboxes uh, we'll need to select. manually. We no need to select. Okay. Select financials, we get everything inside of the financials offering, whatever the different options we have, everything we get. In yesterday's session, okay. if you want to separate everything one by one also, how to select, I, I just shown in yesterday's session, but you don't need to select. But when I select financial, so under which uh, the other checkbox? AP, ER, CM, and FA applications. We'll get everything inside of the financials. Okay, okay. But the checkboxes were remaining unchecked, so that's why I asked. No, no, no. You can select. Okay. Okay. Now the next question is uh, Does Fusion Accounting Hub also come under financials? So that is a finance solution, but is that separate offering? Okay, that is not part of financials. That is separate offering Oracle is providing. Even if you want to implement, you have to take the separate subscription for that. That is a finance solution, but that is not finance module. If you talk about core financial, GL, APR, CM, FA, these are the core financial applications. Okay, okay. Yeah, next question, please. Okay, uh, now the next question is, yeah, so when I was, uh, uh, creating this uh, assigned task. So some of the tasks are going into multiple setups. So I'm not sure what that means. Multiple actually. means, multiple means already you assigned entire project to one resource. That resource will be defaulted. 
and again you are assigning one task to other resource that means multiple the same task is assigned to two members if any task is assigned more than one team member system will display as a multiple okay 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 when we, when we are working on the project when we are accessing the application you can raise this point i'll show you the proof also Please. okay yeah sure yeah the next question is uh, 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 when we log into the uh, fusion application is there a way we can change that to display some other text or i didn't i didn't get your complete question when you log in yeah, so, for instance yeah so on the dashboard itself there is a message yeah, you called can change. good morning you can change okay you can create the sandbox with the help of sandbox you can do all the changes the entire uh, color you can change the look and feel you can change the the framework which you see that you can change how you want to see you can okay okay and yesterday uh, you shown uh, that uh, dashboard statistics of the project uh, completion so right. is it possible to show it again like from where you got that visual reports we'll we'll see when you are in the application we'll see you should have asked that question in yesterday session itself okay you can play yesterday video you can see that okay yeah fine if you go through the yesterday video you can find that from where i navigated from where i navigated i just clicked on overview that system will display the project which is assigned to current user then you can see the the progress of the project but anyway you can look into the yesterday video or that video can answer to your question Okay, yeah, sure. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions, please? So, any questions from anyone, please? So, Lakshman, this is Vijay. Yeah. Uh, I, I dropped an email uh, regarding the uh, credential and uh, the instance factor. I'll I'll see that. I'll see that. Okay. Okay. Check and I'll yeah. report. Any questions from anyone, please? Okay, seems to no questions from anyone. We can wind up for today. We'll connect tomorrow same time and we'll continue from here. Thank you all. Have a good day and good night.